morning and welcome to worship with the Rumpel Memorial Presbyterian Church on this fourth Sunday of Easter, which is also Youth Sunday here in the Rumpel Memorial Presbyterian Church family. The middle school and high school youth and their leaders will be leading all of this service once I finish speaking this morning. And you are in for a wonderful blessing in this worship. We are glad that all of you are able to worship with us this morning that technology enables us to be connected and to worship together even during this time when we have to be apart. Thank you for welcoming us into your homes as we join in this time of worship together this morning. Before worship begins, I wanna pass along a little bit of information. I hope first of all that you know already, but if you don't, here's your note. A copy of the bulletin is available on the church website. That website is rumpelchurch.org. If you click on the Sundays tab, and then the bulletins and find today's date. You can follow along with the full worship order, the corporate prayers, the words to the music that we will sing. It will all be there for you. You may also want to go to the church website to check out the church calendar, to read special announcements about missions and events that are happening in the life of this church. There are detailed announcements, particularly there on the home page, about many special things that are happening during this stay at home time. We are excited to announce that we do have online giving also available there on the church website. You'll see a button that says donate and it is a very easy and straightforward process. We hope that you will take advantage that we have that available now. If you do not receive emails from Rempel already, this is an invitation for you to do so. You can send us a message on our Facebook page or you can also call or email the church office during the week and Jessica will be happy to add you to that list so that you can stay up to date on all that is happening in the life and ministry of this congregation. We do continue to have homemade cloth masks available for anyone who might need one. Members and friends of the Rumpel family have been busy sewing and continue to do so. There is a gray bin outside of the church nursery and the food pantry right near the shopping cart where we're also collecting food and the big blue bin where we are collecting used bottles so that we can donate to the Hunger and Health Coalition Pharmacy. We encourage you if you come to take a mask to just take one per person and if you feel led to do so and you'd like to thank those Rumpel sewers, they're asking for you to make a donation of food or funds to the Blowing Rock Cares food pantry. We are super, super excited here at Rumpel for a wonderful adult education opportunity that begins next Sunday morning. Sunday morning scholars will begin on May the 10th at 9.30 and continue each of the successive Sundays during May. Four different scholars will join us over Zoom. There will be a question and answer format at the beginning facilitated by Dr. Davis Hankins and myself, and then the time will be open for folks to ask questions of our scholars. Our first scholar next Sunday is the Reverend Dr. Brent Strawn. He is no stranger to the Rumpel family. He was here as our first ever visiting scholar in the fall of 2018, and we will welcome him back to be among us through Zoom next Sunday morning. Throughout the month of May, we will be focusing on the book of Psalms in our time of worship. The youth will lead us in a Psalm-focused worship this morning, and that will be the focus of upcoming sermons and worship services in the coming weeks as well. And so our director of music, Dave McCollum, who has done extensive study with the Psalms and Psalms put to music, is recording a number of special musical pieces, musical renditions of the Psalms, and those will be available on the music tab on the Rumpel website. And so we hope that as we explore the Psalms together this month, you will also share in some of those beautiful musical renditions of the Psalms as well. While we are unable to greet one another in person during this time when we are apart, we do continue to share the peace of Christ with one another. And so I invite you to join me in sharing the peace of Christ this morning. We say with American Sign Language, may the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. We are in for a special blessing this morning in this time of worship as the youth and their leaders will lead us in a psalm focused worship service. As we prepare to worship this morning, I invite you as I do each Sunday morning 
If you are able to place your feet securely on the floor in front of you and to assume a posture that is open and relaxed, I invite you to breathe in. Breathe in the peace of Christ and to breathe out. To breathe out the stress, the worry, the anxiety, the fear that may fill you and to continue to breathe in that peace of Christ. May it give you peace, not only in this time of worship, but for all of your days. Our worship begins this morning with a special minute for mission from one of our youth. Let us worship God together. Hi, I'm Darla Bachman, and I'm going to be talking about the Asheville Youth Mission Trip and how it brought me closer to God. I remember when we took our walk of awareness, I just became so thankful for all that I have, and I just thought, I want to help the people who don't have as much as I do. And I just had a moment with God then. We went to the soup kitchen, and I felt so happy I got to help. I thought to myself, some people don't have it as easy as I do, even though they may work harder than me, but still not have enough money to pay for a safe home or food. I wanted to help as much as I could so the people without a home could have a better life and I wanted them to know how much God loves them. Please join me in the responsive call to worship, which comes from Psalm 95. O come, let us sing to the Lord. 
Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to God with songs of praise. Let us make a joyful noise. Let us make a joyful noise to our Lord and Maker. One, two, three. Each Sunday, we begin worship praising God. We now humbly come before our gracious God offering our prayer of confession. This morning, our prayer is based on Psalm 51. Merciful God, have mercy on our souls. According to your unwavering love, according to your abundant mercy, wipe away our sins and the guilt we have carried for so long. Instead, write in our hearts your love, your boundaries for our lives your salvation that sets us free from our sins. To live the abundant life you have for each of us, Lord, create in us clean hearts. Renew your spirit within us. Do not turn us away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us your, the love of your salvation and sustain in us a willing spirit. Write in our hearts your love, O oh God. Amen. Take a few moments to bow your head in silent prayer. The knowledge that you forgive us is our joy. We open our lips and declare your praise. For you have delivered us from our sin and have made us new. Alleluia. Amen. Hi, everybody. This is Lottie Gotze. I'm Evan Adair. And we are the Rumpel Youth Interns, and we are going to have a little time with the children today. I am going to share with you one of my favorite things to do during this time. Ooh. wonder what it is. It is this. Oh, oh no. Oh yes. Oh no. Oh my gosh. Woo! Yes. Oh gosh. Oh, no. I love feeling the wind here. It's so cool. So cool. Oh, no. Evan, I don't really like this. Oh gosh, this is so oh, scary. Oh, you don't oh. like this? No, I don't like I don't like roller coasters. Every time that I wait in line. It makes my stomach feel so upset. I feel so anxious. I get scared, and sometimes I cry. I don't like oh, it. Oh, I'm sorry, Lottie. I didn't know you felt all those things. Oh. I was like, when I ride a roller coaster, I get really excited. It's just like you can see so much from a top, and, you know, it gets down, and you get that really funny feeling in your stomach, and it makes you all happy, and, you know. But it's okay that I like roller coasters, and I like being up high. And you don't have those same emotions for roller coasters. But when you think about it, life is kind of like a roller coaster where we have these really, really happy, excited emotions sometimes when we're really up. And sometimes we're not so up. Sometimes we're feeling a little tired or a little sad or maybe we're angry or, you know, feeling a little alone. But that's all OK, because those are all you know, emotions that we're going to feel in life. But we always know that even when we get on a roller coaster, even when we're doing things day to day, that the operator is still there standing by. And that operator for us is God. Whenever we're feeling any of these emotions, we know that we can turn to God. So to make our days better. Yeah, I love that, Evan. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, 
we will all bow our heads, we'll close this time. Um, Father God, thank you so much for always being there with us, whether it's high emotions of feeling joyful and happy, um, or just the low times in life where we're feeling a little more upset or angry or sad or alone. Uh, God, you are always there with us, always beside us, and we are so, so grateful. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. It was great talking with you guys. Goodbye. Please join us in the prayer of preparation from Psalm 119. O Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth and faith and love and strength to follow on the path you set before us. Through Jesus Christ, amen. Our reading for today comes from the Psalm 30. I will exalt you, Lord, for you rescued me. You refuse to let my enemies triumph over me. O oh Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you restored my health. You brought me up from the grave, O oh Lord. You kept me from falling into the pit of death. Sing to the Lord, all you godly ones. Praise his holy name. For his anger only lasts a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. When I am prosperous, I said, nothing can stop me now. Your favor, O Lord, made me as secure as a mountain. Then you turned away from me and I was shattered. I cried out to you, O Lord. I begged the Lord for mercy saying, what will you gain if I die? If I sink into the grave, can my dust praise you? Can it tell of your faithfulness? Hear me, Lord, and have mercy on me. Help me, O Lord. You have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy, that I may sing praises to you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks forever. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, thanks be to God. So this semester, the youth have been studying all of the Psalms and we've been approaching them as they were originally written as songs, uh, songs of praise, songs of exaltation, songs that show us the emotional side of us fragile human beings. A lot of the Psalms are attributed to King David who cries out to the Lord in so many, many different fashions. And it's all okay, because no matter what, we know that God is going through this journey of life with us. 
no matter what emotions we feel, we can always turn back to God as our rock, as our security, through times of joy, through times of anger and sorrow, when we feel like we're going into the pit, when we feel like we need to sing out in exultation, God is there, and God will always be there with us. Our youth today will be giving personal testimonies about how different emotions affect them in life and how they can always come back to God when they are ready. We're excited for you guys to hear. When I feel eager, I don't feel God's presence until the aftermath, and I need to start by using God's presence while I'm eager to pray about my eagerness. I feel eager waiting for things because I'm impatient. It keeps you excited but tired of waiting. It can cause many arguments and make people angry. If I ever if I'm ever eager and I start an argument, I think about the argument after the argument and it makes me feel bad and makes me want to pray. Eagerness is not a bad is not bad, but you shouldn't take it the wrong way. It it can cause you to block people out or cause an argument with them. It can make you have less time to spend with God. And after I feel eager, it, um, it makes me talk and um, pray. Hello, my name is Dewey Isaacs. And I'm with the Rumpel Youth Group. And my emotion that I'm talking about today is humility and how it brings us closer to God. Um, God humbles you through things that you do. So say, you know you get fired from work or you know you have a bad like you have a bad performance say you know like in a talent show or whatever anything really god can humble you through that um being humble will help you walk a path of the lord early easier than if you were arrogant being humble will help you be with the lord easier because you'll go to the lord more for help than if you were arrogant if you're arrogant you know, you would have lots of pride and lots of, like, I guess, sort yeah, just, like, you'd be very prideful, you know, you would refuse to go to the Lord for help, instead you would try to fix everything on yourself, like, by yourself, and that just wouldn't be very good, um, avoiding humility will work, will mask who you are as a person, and will drive you to lie about yourself, um, when you're not being humble, you're gonna, you know, be arrogant, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna think like, oh, I'm all this, right? Well, you're gonna end up lying about yourself. So, say, like, if you're arrogant, you're gonna lie, like, maybe, like, oh, like, I have a 4.0 G, just something like that, you know, something that'll make you seem higher, more high than you actually are. But when you're humble, you're able to admit, you know, sin and just things that aren't going well in your life so say like you know you would be able to admit sin easier you'd be able to divulge in it and you would just have a better healthier life overall and also just being humble makes you a better person overall you know when you're arrogant no one really likes you so um yeah being being humble just helps you come closer to God in many, many ways. And it's a very, very um, important thing to do when you're trying to become closer to God and have a relationship with Him. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching my video. I know that many of us have felt uncertain before, especially lately when it's difficult to plan for the future. During times of uncertainty, I often feel distance from God. I have felt unsure about many things Going into my senior year of high school, I'm beginning to look at colleges and there are so many things to consider. There are so many different programs, costs, and locations to think about because my mom doesn't want me to move too far away. Worry often fills me. When I feel overwhelmed by all of the options that I have, I've found myself turning to God. God is the only thing that provides consistent and dependable comfort during unknown times. Trusting in God is the only thing that truly brings peace to hearts filled with worry about the future. And God is always there 
to turn to in prayer to help you through hard times. My name is Abe, and I'm going to be talking to you all about how discouragement has brought me closer to God. So discouragement for me is feeling like things that I do don't have a purpose or impact, so I don't want to keep doing them. And um, I felt this way in school, sports, at home, and most importantly, with my relationship with God. And so um, a scripture to help me with this is Joshua 1.9, and it states, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And this is helpful um, because it lets me know that God is with me. Um, and it's good to rely on God and not myself. Um, especially through hardships. And because um, lots of people in the world right now are experiencing hardships. Um, a good scripture to help with that would be 2 Corinthians 4.16 Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. I hope this video can help you overcome discouragement. I feel regret whenever I take a test in school. I know we have one and I don't study. I feel regret when I get a bad grade or don't do as well as I know I can. I turn to God to help me feel better and get a better grade next time. I also feel repentance at this time because I feel I did the wrong thing because I did not work or study hard enough. I also feel regret whenever I am swimming at a big meet and I feel I did not try my best. I did not try my best or push myself to the very maximum. I do not like feeling regret, and I think it is important to try your best all the time. Hello everyone. Today, I was tasked with talking about desperation and what it's like to feel when you're desperate and how to get out of that situation. And so, starting off, I feel like a lot of people have been in a situation where they were desperate, where they needed, just felt like there was no way out, or, like for example, a car crash, or you did something you weren't supposed to, or you got caught, I don't know, but, um... There's a lot of different situations for that. And you can feel like you're helpless or you don't know what's the next move or how to get out of the situation. And I feel like a lot of the time we need to look to God and say, how has he helped me in the past? And how has he provided me with tools to get through things similar to this in the past? And just work your way through it one step at a time and not to overly worry about it to say that God is watching my back and just know that you're protected. And so that in the future, you won't necessarily be carefree and like running into a bad situation, but more, you won't be overly worried about something that you know that you can fix or something that's not inside your area of influence. And um, I think that is the best way to get out of a place when you're in desperation is just keep moving forward and know what you can do and how to help with that. Hey, yeah. My name is Lucy and today I will be talking about isolation. So sometimes when we are feeling sad, angry, or upset, uh, we like to put ourselves in isolation and away from others. I know that when I'm feeling like that, I like to be alone, I just go to my room, and God doesn't want us to isolate ourselves from one another. He wants us to go and spread his word. Uh, it's okay it's obviously okay to have some alone time. And if you're gonna have some time to yourself, you might as well just pray or worship and connect and become closer to God. And Proverbs 18.1, one who has isolated himself seeks his own desires. He rejects all sound judgment. Uh, to me, this means that one that just keeps to themselves and isolates and doesn't connect with other people and other Christians is not doing anything good for God and is not doing God's word. There have been many times in my life that I have felt anger towards someone or something. Feeling angry or the emotion of anger can be different for everyone and can be expressed in so many different ways. For some, it can be praying or doing devotion, crying, exercising, or even going on a walk to cool down. Anger can be stuck deep inside, and if you don't express it, that isn't good for you.
One example of anger that I experience probably on a daily basis is fighting with my siblings. They both know how to get under my skin and push me to the edge. But every time we fight or argue, we find new ways to get along and new ways to figure out how to forgive each other. When I'm angry, it impacts my whole family because sometimes I don't resort to the best way of expressing myself and telling them how I feel. I want to be able to sit down when I'm angry and read my devotion book or pray about what I'm angry about instead of taking it out on my loved ones. This can bring me a lot closer to God because I will be vulnerable and not take my anger out on others, but channel it into something healthy and important. The emotion that I chose that brought me closer to God was failure. I used to feel failure when I would lose a game on my Christian travel team. I felt like by failing, I was disappointing God. But then I finally realized that God loves you whether you fail or win. This brought me closer to God and I'm better off for it. I think that everyone likes to feel joy. um, Because I know I personally do. To feel content with yourself and happy um, about something that has just happened. Um... I know I feel joy after uh, my team wins a sports game or I do well in school. And while I think it's important to enjoy that feeling, I think it's also very important to give thanks to God um, for giving you a place to feel that joy um, and helping you along in your life so that you can feel joy. Because I know oftentimes I turn to God um, when I'm angry and I'm not happy with something that's happened rather than turning to God when I'm joyful and I'm happy about a situation. And I think that it's important that we um, give thanks to God in times of happiness rather than only turning to him in times of anger and sadness. I also think through our joy that we can spread it to other people. Um, I think it's very important to spread God's love through positive um reinforcement and uh being you know good nice people and spreading joy around the world um so that's another way that we can use joy to connect with god and to spread god's love around the world Join us in our affirmation of faith from Psalm 23. The Lord is our shepherd. We have everything we need from our God. God gives us rest in the green meadows and beside the cool waters. You, O God, restore our souls. We are led down right paths that bring honor to your name. Even when we walk through dark and difficult valleys, we will not fear, for our God is with us, protecting, comforting, guarding, and guiding every step we take. You prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You lavish us with blessings to the point of overflowing. We know with confidence that your goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives, and our eternity shall be in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. In all the noise around us, how can God hear us? How can we hear God? In the deep silence of this time and space, let us lift up our prayers to God. When you hear the sound of one of the instruments, 
Feel free to speak aloud petitions on your heart. Once the instrument stops playing, keep silent again. Let us pray. Hear our prayers as we pray for the hurting and the lost, the despairing, the friendless, and the downtrodden people. Hear the words of the psalmist. The righteous are generous and keep giving. May we be generous and share our gifts of lives and labors to our God. Let us use this time of offertory to consider the gifts we have offered to God. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Mm -hmm. 